guys, this is Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. So I have a super exciting video for you today. I am talking about mothership number seven. And we have confirmed it is actually mothership number seven because whoo, if you have been paying attention to the launch of this beauty, you know it's been nerve wracking. You don't know if it's mothership number six, is it six part two, was it a typo? But this is mothership seven and this is divine rose. Okay, so let's look at the artwork. It is beautiful and Dare I say, I think this is actually some of the one of the most beautiful artworks that I have seen from the Pat McGrath series. I like all the artwork. Mothership number five is my favorite artwork. And then after that, I would say number six, number six, because it's just like a purple version of it. But this is different to what we have seen um, as far as the artwork. And I think it just came out so gorgeous and it's very representative of the colors that's inside of the palette. So of course, you know, when we unwrap it, we have this great legal type of envelope closure system here and then we open it up and we have the lacquered uh palette right here that we are very much accustomed to when it comes to pat mcgrath labs and i just can't figure out which way to hold it there we go okay so of course on the back we have is the mothership and we're going to use it without caution and it's going to be shade throwing and eye ecstasy and you know it's going to lead to prolonged eye use you know you know how another pad is. And then, of course, we have the name card right here. And on the back, she started putting some fun facts about herself and the makeup industry on the palette. So people just know, like, what she is bringing to the game. You know, Mother's bringing a lot. She has 87 makeup trunks when she comes to a runway show. That's a lot of makeup trunks, okay? And then she has 25 years of groundbreaking experience. And then she has done... 3,300 runway shows and 129,000 miles, models, that's it, models, <laughs> models, and you know, the list just goes on and on and on. So I'm going to open up the palette and we're going to talk about some other stuff, get into some swatches, and I have three looks, one palette for you, and we're going to wrap up with some final thoughts. So let's get rolling. So when you open up the palette, this is what you have here, and I'll talk about what happened with my shadows in a moment, okay? Like, it did not arrive bright broken and yeah i'll tell you when i start my first look what happened so <sighs> i'm a little upset with it but this is the beautiful palette so this palette doesn't really photograph the best and on camera it's probably coming across like oh that's it it's that little dull but when you see it in person it's actually a very beautiful palette now it is a bit neutral as when we come to think about Pat McGrath, you know her color schemes are kind of everywhere. You used to like a blue and a purple and a pink and a gold and a bronze. And you know, if you like Mothership Six, you got a purple and a bronze and a gold and a red, matte. You know, it's a lot going on. But this is very muted when we're talking about Pat McGrath here, okay? So I actually think it's quite beautiful. And a lot of people are saying like, this is a palette that I want to try because it's very neutral in color scheme and is approachable for a lot of people, okay? Now, let's talk about it, the antics of this palette, okay? So, we did not know that this palette was coming, okay? So, Pat McGrath has been releasing a lot of stuff, and we're just like, okay, we got the holiday collection, and I love the holiday collection. It's cute. And then back in September slash August, maybe we had Mothership 6, and it was like around the time that we usually have a Mothership palette, okay? You know, we get our one per year now, and... Then we had the quads and we had maybe a couple other things coming out. And then it was just like, surprise, this is here. And everybody's like, wait, what? But it was only exclusive to the suffragists, uh, department store. Okay, so October 30th, I was like perusing through Trim Mood as I do. And then I saw this palette and I was like, the picture was small. And I was like, that looks like Pat McGrath. And it was like available now. Well, by the time I got a chance to look at Trim Mood on the Instagram that day, that palette was not available. So it released actually on October 30th exclusively to Suffrages. Suffrages is a department store that is in London, and it's a fabulous department store, okay? It's a wonderful department store. I love it very much, okay? And if I had to compare it to something in the States, I would say it's like Nordstrom's. So um, it's exclusive to Suffrages, 
but it's only actually exclusive to the suffragists app so a lot of people didn't realize that so they were able to get it from the app and then it just sold out and then on the suffragists website they had it was mothership six so then everybody's like are there two mothership sixes we don't know and then it was like we didn't even know this was coming out what is going on and it was just sold out and some people were able to get their hands on it and a lot of people weren't so it meant for two weeks we were sitting there like some crazy people and i was one of the crazy people and every time pat mcgrath would drop something on her instagram we're like okay is this it okay is this it okay is this it and we're like okay so when are we gonna get the palette is it coming to pat mcgrath website is it gonna come to sephora because you know here she sold to sephora which is like People in Sephora Australia are pissed. Like everybody's like, I need this palette. And then we find out it's limited edition and it just causes even more chaos. So then I want to say a week later, she's like, yes, set your alarm for 10 a.m. Eastern time or 9 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be a huge launch. And then like the time goes by and we're like, girl, where's the launch? Where, where's the news? Like uh, we just hear like, waiting waiting so then she finally posts it and it's a giveaway of the palette so everybody's like you know what okay mother like really a giveaway like that's great but you're gonna be in new york i live here i live in la i live there like i can't get to new york so she gave did a giveaway of the palette in New York and I'm not even sure how many people got the palette it looks like a wide variety of people got the palette and the giveaway looked actually quite lovely but then it was like another few days before we had to wait to say girl when are you gonna release this palette so then she finally told us I want to say around the 13th of November now remember we had started this whole journey on October 30th and now it's November 13th and she finally tells us, or it's around November 13th, that the palette will be released at, on November 15th. Praise God. So I was able to pick up my palette on November 15th. And usually what she does, she gives us an access code if you sign up online on her Pat McGrath website online. And then she will send you a code. So I had no problems with the launch as far as February, uh, sorry, as, as far as, excuse me, I cannot speak. As November 15th I was able to get my code um, the palette went on sale at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time I live in the Central Time Zone so that was 8 o'clock my time I got the code I woke up I purchased my palette I rolled right back over went back to sleep okay for like at least another hour and a half no shame in my game okay so <laughs> I was able to purchase a palette get 10% off and then the shipping was free like I said it's been a lot of drama like okay pat like do the giveaway that's cute but just tell us when you were going to release the palette because it just caused so much hysteria and unfortunately the palette is sold out now so i it does look like she's going to restock it because when i look in the comments on instagram pat mcgrath is very responsive on her instagram and she does engage with her um followers and so people are like we want it so then she's like yes yeah, soon or she says it in her coded message like soon beauties stay tuned so it does look like she's going to restock it i'm not sure if she didn't like mean to plan this palette or what was going to happen I, I mean she has a big following already but then i feel like when you drop a palette this neutral and this wearable in a color scene that a lot of people can wrap their minds around like it it's going to be hot you know what i mean it's going to be hot and then this palette it's not look like it's coming to sephora she did say it's going to be a pat mcgrath exclusive i know when she did ritualistic rose it's supposed to be a Pat McGrath exclusive and then it ended up on Sephora. I don't know. I'm just telling you what I see, what I have seen in the comments. I don't know anything. So that's just my little two cents about it. Like my word is not the gospel when I say I don't know anything. Okay. But I'm telling you what I have seen when I'm kind of looking on the comments. Okay. And checking the pulse and checking the temperature of what is going on in the makeup community. So with that being said, 
let's go ahead and do some swatches at this point you know the palette costs 125 dollars pat mcgrath ain't cheap she ain't coming to play before we jump into the swatches real quick i do want to point out that there are actually four repeating shades in this palette so that might be a sticking point for you when you're talking about a palette this particular price point and the Shades that are repeating are Skin Show Nude. Now, Skin Show Nude can be found in Mothership One, which is the subliminal palette, which with the light packaging and that blitz blue in there. But however, in all of the Mothership palettes, except for Mothership 4, which is Decadence, which is all that satin metallic formula, there is some type of skin show uh, shade in there. So that comes standard, so that really isn't like a big deal for me. The next shade that is a true repeat is this shade called Rose Dusk. Rose Dusk can be found in Mothership 2, and Mothership 2 is the sub subliminal palette no sublime excuse me sublime yes sublime palette <laughs> and that is the one with the green packaging okay and then we have um astral solstice which is one of the special shades and astral solstice can be found in the newest mothership palette which is mothership six which is the midnight sun this shade iridescent pink is also a repeat but it's a repeat in her highlight trio so it's not technically an eyeshadow but she does have some shades called astral orchid ghost orchid there we go and that is in mothership two and three so that shade is a little bit similar but the formula in this particular one is a lot smaller than the astro ghost orchid okay so if you're wondering i think you know i think she has good placement and i think that sometimes you just don't want to recreate the wheel and that's why she probably just put these shades in here but if that is just like something that's a no-go for you i just want you to be mindful of that first shade we have is skin show nude It's a beautiful champagne shade. The next shade we have is Valoria, which is a matte mauve dusk purple shade. And then we have Sable Bronze. And Sable Bronze is a satin formula. Next up, we have Refined Gold 002, which is a special shade. And it's a beautiful, smooth, glistening gold. Then we have our next shade, which is Iridescent Pink 003, which is also a duochrome shade with a beautiful pink hue. It's very smooth and one of the special shades. Next up, we have Extreme Mahogany. And this is a beautiful, deep brown. Next up, we have Love Lace, which is a beautiful metallic shade, her standout metallic formula that can be found in that Decadence palette and many of the palettes across the board. Then we have Rose Dusk, which is a beautiful satin shade that can also be blended out in the crease. And then we have VR Rose Venus, which is a beautiful dual chrome pink gold. And I do see some green in it when I look at it this way. Not sure if that comes up on camera. Last but not least, we have Astral Solstice, which is a beautiful, icy, glittery shade. And these are the swatches. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the first eye. Let me tell y'all, I was like holding up my palette just a second ago before I was starting to look. And... My nail went into all of this because I was about to drop my palette. About to mess it up before I could even get started. So therefore, I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go over the parts where, you know, I was about to, <laughs> that I dug my nail into so hopefully it can make it look a little bit better. So we're gonna start with a number 16 Wayne Goss brush. And I am going to go in with Valoria, which is this beautiful shade right here. And we're going to see if we can help that little nicking. Child, I ain't told up. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to put this in the crease. Okay, we're going to go back and forth. Windshield wiper motions. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> this is beautiful. Very mauvey, very taupey. <laughs> it's mauvey. Yeah, mauvey. Mauvey. 
mauve purpley color. Okay, gives us a nice little wash. It gives us depth along here. It's kind of probably a little hard to see on camera, but there is something there. I mean, I just like, it is literally a dig in the palette. Like, what in the holy heck? Okay, this shade is blending out very nicely. I know I need to fix up my eyebrow right there, y'all, but, you know, I'll fix them up before we present the final looks. And I have just a tiny bit of fallout on because I probably took too much because I was sitting here fooling around trying to cover up where I messed up the palette. Golly. I can't even believe I did that. Oh. All right, going in, same number 16 brush. I just wiped it off. I'm going to go in with the shade Rose Dust. And this is the shade right here. And I'm going to try to emulate hot mess. Okay, and I'm just gonna blend that in the crease. And this, this gives off a more pinky uh, feel to it. Now, you know this shade is not a matte, but it's one of her uh, smooth, like satin formulas that can be put in the crease. Uh, kind of how you see. Now, this shade is available in Mothership too. So this is one of the repeat shades. And, but it's like the same formula that you know that's in Mothership 2, uh, Mothership 6, where it might not be matte, but it's a fine satin uh, male shade where you can just throw it in the crease for extra definition. Now going in with a Sonya G, and this is a Worker Pro brush, I am going to go in with the shade Extreme Mahogany right here. And I'm going to put that on the outer corner, okay? And so far, everything is performing just how I expected to. And the shades are really pretty. I'm just gonna kind of pack that in, give us a little bit of definition on that outer corner. It looks nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, overall, it's just a wearable palette. And it doesn't make it less beautiful. It's just, you know, just depends on maybe your makeup aesthetic. But that, that gives a nice smoke to it. Okay. And I don't even have to do much blending. I'm not going to take it too far in. I don't want to mess up that first transition shade we had there. But there we go. They can get a little smoky really quickly. So be careful. I'm going to add it just a little bit right here. And it just didn't stick. Sometimes my shadows don't stick right there. That's just me. Now going in with my Sonya G. This is my Builder Pro. I'm going to take the shade Love Lace. And as you can see, oh, big old nail mark. My gosh. Okay, so at least this, this shade is a little bit easier to, you know, kind of pat down because it's that, it's more of a metallic shade. And I'm going to sweep this across the lid. Ooh, so you get a nice subtle smoke with this. Ooh, because you know, Pat, even though if it's neutral, you, you can get some smokiness with her stuff. That's actually very pretty. Ooh, I'm here for it. It's a very subtle, smoky eye. So that is dry, but let's let's see what it looks like wet. I'm gonna pick a little bit more up on my brush, that same brush. I'm gonna go in with this Maybelline setting spray. I know usually I use my Urban Decay, but I had this like in my backup drawer. I have a very small backup drawer, y'all, so it would not be worth me doing a video on it. You'll see it whenever I film my next makeup collection video. <laughs> Just gonna put that out there. Um, okay, so it just gives it a little bit amp. Just a little bit, yeah. Just amps it up just a little bit. I'm gonna go in with my Blender Pro and fix this little area right here. This is always like a little problem spot for me sometimes. I'm like, why does my shadow always look a little crazy right there? And you know, in person, it doesn't always look like that, but then when I look in the viewfinder, it kind of tells on me. So I'm just gonna fix the blending there. It's the first look. I wipe that brush off. I am going to go in with Skin Show Nude, and we're going to I'm going to pop that in the inner corner. And that was another shade I stuck my old finger in. I'm just going to pop it right here. 
Now going in with my Sephora liner, I just want to give it a little bit more boost, but I don't want that these particular glitter particles all in my brushes. So I'm going to take Astral Solstice. And this is actually a repaint shade. This can be found in Mothership 6, which is the one that just got out, came out. You know, I'm still trying to get fully acquainted with, but you know. <laughs> and just gives it a little extra punch okay so this is it and we'll go on to the next eye. okay so my other eye is primed i'm using that same concealer which is my Too Faced multi sculpting concealer i don't think i said it for this one but that's the concealer i used on that eye i am going to go in with my number 16 wayne goss brush and i'm going to start with the shade rose dusk that is here and i'm going to start this off as my transition shade And I'm just going to focus it more so up here by the bow ball. And I'm just doing blending motions back and forth. I'm kind of just doing some circling motions right here to blend it out. And see how effortless it just blends out. So it's like you don't have to worry about not having, you know, another matte shade other than this deep brown because you definitely have this to work with. Or you can use it as a lid shading. Very versatile. Like it blends out just like a matte. It's amazing. Okay. Now wiping that brush off. Very good. In my um, makeup towel, I'm going to take that same brush, go in with sable bronze. That is oops, here. Now I'm going to take that brush and I'm just going to focus this a little bit lower in the crease. See how that meshes together so well? And I'm just focusing that in more of the middle part of my crease. Going in with my Sonya G Worker Pro, I'm going to go ahead and take Extreme Mahogany. And I'm just going to put this on the outer part also. Okay, that is nice. And it, it builds up nice, but I don't know if I want to take it too much darker. Because you know sometimes with Pat McGrath, um shadows we can get very dark very quickly like what is happening now picking up my little tart brush that i like to use for my shimmers i would suggest like a scratchy brush or something a little bit synthetic for these next set of shadows i'm gonna go in with refined gold 002 which is this right here the light is bouncing off of it but now you can see the shade better right here and I'm going to pick some of that up and I'm going to put this on this open spot that we have right here. And so far it's pretty. I was like, I can't really see the full scope of the color just yet. Okay, that's very pretty. All right. Ooh. Okay. Now I am, some of the special shades, I do like to wet it because it just makes the glitter particles adhere a little bit better. So you don't have to use that Mephron mixing medium if you don't have it that Pat McGrath always shows in her videos, but some good old fashioned setting spray. And I just used that Maybelline setting spray that I used in the first look will really help it. And look, it has so much shine to it. It is really smooth. Those 002 formulas, can be super smooth and just so foil. I'm gonna go back in with some more. And how I really like to pick it up, like I said, this brush is very tight, it's compact, it's scratchy. I like to do this. And I was like, let me get the motion right. But yeah, I like to do that to pick up the color. It's thing like you just pick up so much more quickly and then see, and you really get to activate all the glitter particles in the shadows and you see like after you put it down maybe wet it it just really bumps it up and makes it to a gold where it's like this gold is popping this is a nice gold 
No, gold is something that Pat McGrath does put in her palettes quite a bit, but I mean, at the end of the day, like who doesn't? Like Natasha Denona made a whole gold palette. Physicians Formula basically kind of duped it. <laughs> um, and the Metropolis palette had like four or five golds in there. So, you know, every brand does it. And at the end of the day, we all say we hate it, but you know, gold is universal. And if you don't have all the palettes, you know, you might want the gold. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more extreme mahogany, picking up that same uh, Sonya G. This was the Worker Pro that I used in the outer corner, and I'm just gonna make sure that's kind of like blended in together. There we go. That turned out to be beautiful. Hmm. I'm going to clean off my little glitter liner and I'm going to go in with the shade Iridescent Gold, what is it, 003. And this is a repeat, uh, it was, did I say irid it's Iridescent Pink 003? This is actually a repeat shade also. Ooh, okay, those two together. Mm. I see. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but... do look nice together. Ooh. It just gives it a little hit of, if you look this way, it's a little pinkier. I don't think you can really see it on camera. So that is a repaint shade. It's a highlighter, actually. Um, and the Highlighter Trio palette, I actually don't have that palette. You know, shocking, right? Mm -hmm. But, let's see. So these are both of the looks. I'm gonna pop on some little bit of liner and put some lashes on and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and here are the final two looks. So one look on this side and the other on this one. I think they both came out beautiful. As you can see, the shadows were very easy to use. So I just went ahead and added on my Ardell Demi Wispy Lashes. And for my lips, I'm using Cork Lip Liner with Omi. This is Pat McGrath, it's a mini. It came in a little kit, um, Flesh Fantasy Kit, I wanna say. This is Omi Lipstick. And then I topped it off with a little bit of gloss by Pat McGrath called Divine Rose. <laughs> Like I did that, Divine Rose, okay. So this is the Lust Gloss and this is Divine Rose and it came with one of her little mini kits also so you can pick up the glosses. These are very good values because you get like three for $25, just a little plug in there. You know, one is 25, one lipstick is 38. So, you know, the way to try out the glosses. So overall, I really like how these looks came out. The shadows, the formula is consistent. Right? It's nothing else I can say about that. You know, mm -hmm. the mattes are very, well, we only used two mattes. So that was Extreme Mahogany. And then that was, uh, what is this called? Uh, Valoria. So Valoria provides like a nice mauve coverage that we have right here in this look. So this eye is just very mauve. It's very kind of monochromatic chromatic excuse me and then we have a little touch of lightness with the uh astro what is this astro solstice <laughs> you know this shade right here one of the special shades but all of the mattes blend in so well i mean the look just looks smooth it looks luxurious the shadows just melt into your skin it's just very pretty and you don't have any trouble blending this out it provides a nice base for all of these particular shadows right here or like when i went in on my second eye this eye when this particular shadow, it blended out just like a matte shadow. We didn't have any issue. So if you're worried about putting shadows like this in your crease, if you have a hooded eye like I do, because I have this extra fold right here, sometimes that doesn't play well, but these particular shadows do. Excuse me, my voice is a little, whew. So this plays very well in the crease together. So you do have more options to do for your transition, which is great. And so this gold shade right here, this, uh, what is this? Redefined Gold 002. It's very beautiful. As you see, it just brings a lightness to the eye and it just really sets it off. When the light just hits it just right, you're gonna get all types of sparkles. You're gonna get that shine. You're gonna get the foiledness of it. So like I said, just make sure you use a scratchy brush with it and everything is okay. And then right here, I have put the, um, Love Lace right here, which is a very kind of rosy, romantic shade. So you can definitely have like a couple looks. So this is very monochromatic, and then this is very like gold lid, you know, kind of standard light outer crease. So very wearable looks. I think like these looks are very pretty, very wearable, not, you know, very approachable for many people, okay? Okay. 
Okay, I'm back and eyelids are prime using my Too Faced Multi Sculpting Concealer. Going in Wayne Goss number 16, going in with Valoria. Right here. And I'm just gonna put this in the transition area. Really towards the brow bone. Just blend that out. You just get a really nice mauve tone with this. And of course, I think this shade goes so well with the shade that's in La Vie and Rose. Uh, I can't ever think of the name of it, but La Vie and Rose is actually one of my favorite uh, palettes. So just blending that out right there. Looks good. Okay, so here's the moment I've been waiting for. I'm going to take my Sonia G and I'm going to take a Builder Pro right here and I'm going in with VR Rose Venus. So that is this beautiful duo chrome shade right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up some with my brush and then I'm going to place this all over the lid basically and up into the crease. Oh man, this is pretty. And I'm just going to put it all over. And this is it without any setting spray. It's so pretty. This is like the shade that was like, mm hmm yep, I need it. I need the palette, I, I need it, mm-hmm. Arguably one of the prettiest rose goldy dual chrome Melanie shades I have seen in my life. And it also reminds me a lot of that pigment by MAC that's called um, Melon. Yeah, it's, a, it's called Melon. I am just, Blending that up. This shade, it blends out so easily. Do you, did you see that? Like, just so easily. And I'm just putting that up into like my eye socket area, brow bone area. Okay, of course I wanna wet it. <clears throat> we gotta see what it looks like wet, okay? Taking my Maybelline uh, setting spray. Getting that brush a little spritz. Ooh. It just makes it even more foiled and it just really brings the glitter out. Do you see? And I'm just going to pat a little bit more on. The brush is still semi wet. I didn't wet it. <clears throat> I'm like, what am I trying to say? I didn't wet it too much. Now, going in with my Sonia G Crease Pearls, which is a little bit more round and tapered, I am going to pick up some of Extreme Mahogany right here. And I'm just going to ever so lightly kind of build it up on the side. And I'm just going to kind of do circular motions. And I know I have a lot of pigment right there. And I'm just going to kind of blend it in. Pick up a little bit more. And just give like the outer corner just a little bit of definition. Now, I don't want to mess the look up, but part of me, I just want to see if this works. So, with an ever so light finger, I'm just going to take my finger because I feel like if I use my applicator, it's going to be too pigmented. But I'm going to go in with a little bit of incandescent pink, uh, what is it, 003, which is this shade right here. And I'm just going to pick it up a little bit. And this is all that's on my finger. And I'm just going to. Ooh. Okay. 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 And it just gave it a little bit of. Yes. Ooh. Hmm. That's what I was looking for. And just tapping it right here. Because I feel if I picked up the liner, it would, this applicator, rather, it was just going to be lay down way too much product. And even though that's a beautiful dual chrome, dual chrome shifting shade, I just wanted to, I don't know, just put a little something extra there. And then I'm just going to kind of blend it out a little bit more so we don't overtake the look right here on the side. There we go. Yep. 
So it's just kind of really right there in the center. And taking that same little blending brush, I'm just going to go back in with Valoria real quick. Tap off and just make this little inner part a little darker. And that's just to add a little bit more contour to the look, giving the illusion that my eyes are a little bit more um, deep set and I hood it. Just kind of bringing that down. Yep. The contour to look. Okay, so I'm gonna add my lashes and we'll be right. Okay, I am back and I put on my lashes, same lashes Ardell did me with space. I'm going back into the palette. I picked up my Sonya G Pencil Pro brush and I am going to pick up this shade. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, Rose Dusk, okay? And then I might add a little mystery mahogany in because I just feel like I need a little something on the lash line. It's like now taking I'm going to pick same brush going in with extreme mahogany I am really upset that I put my fingers in my palette and I'm just gonna blend that down it's really irking my soul Y'all just don't know. Going in with a little bit of mascara. This is the Tarte Lights Camera Flashes. Hit up that little bottom lash line. Now I'm going to pick up my highlighter brush right here. This is this little Christian Seriano brush. I'm going to go in with the Iridescent Pink 003. Since it was a highlight shade in the highlighter trio. And I'm just going to put it on the cheeks. I'm like, do I see it? Okay, I see it a little bit. Okay, it gives a little bit of a peek. I was like, at first I was like, can, can I see it? Okay, yep, I can see it now. It was like, I already had highlighter on, but you know, just add a little bit more to what's, you know. More highlighter. It's it's not like a good thing. Some some sometimes. Some sometimes. Okay. So this is the final look. And so I'll pull out so we can talk about. Okay, I'm back. And so like I said, this is the final look. So I think it came out really beautiful. So let's jump into what I think about the palette. Okay, of course, I think the palette is beautiful. I think she did an amazing job on this. And I really do like it. The formula is on par and it's everything that you expect when it comes to Pat McGrath. You have the opulence, you have the beautiful artwork, you have the beautiful lacquered case, you have the stunning formula of the shadows. So I know there are some repeat shadows. So to me, it's kind of like, mm. but then at the same time, I get it because Actually, when I was reading the comments, a lot of people haven't tried Pat McGrath yet. And it's because a lot of her color schemes, people do not get. Like, if you look at Mo uh, Mothership 6, for instance, that just released, you know, the one that's behind me, you have that green, you have, like, a bright copper, you have, like, a reddish-brown matte, and then you have, like, the Blitz Violet, and people are just like... I, 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 I can't put that together. And then you have Mothership 5, which is arguably one of the best palettes, hands down. So that color scheme makes a lot more sense and was one of the palettes that a lot of people also first picked up because that was just such a warm color scheme that made sense. But if you look at Mothership 2, you have like Gigabyte, that green color, that chartreuse green, and you got the purple with the night creature, and you got black and a brown, and then some other duochrome shifting shades with a blue in there. People can't always comprehend that. So, you know, sometimes people are not going to purchase that just because they're like, well, I'm not going to use it. I don't understand how to use it but this palette for people right here I saw a lot of people were saying like this is my first purchase and I totally get it because if we look at neutral palettes across the board people like neutrals even though they try to say like they don't it's a lot of people who like neutrals it's a lot of people who want to try the brand but are not going to invest money in something a color scheme that they don't totally vibe with but a lot of people vibe with this color scheme 
I mean, it's gorgeous. You cannot deny that. It's a really pretty neutral palette with an uh, excellent formula. You're going to get excellent color payoff. You're going to get great pigmentation. So I think, like, if you're my skin complexion, you're deeper, you're definitely going to be able to use it. If you're lighter than me, you're going to be able to use it also. And people want to try Pat McGrath's formula. So I get why she released this palette. It gives us something different to her collection as far as her brand where it's like it's something for everybody but still keeps a lot of creative control for Pat because I feel like she puts a lot of thought and time into all of her palettes, all the sage all the shade selections of the palettes. And so she wanted to probably give people something that they can want to wear on a daily basis because you could definitely wear this on a daily basis. And then you can amp it up with some of the glittery shades and you could put uh, the Astro Solstice color right here and just amp it up. So overall, I really like the palette. Now for me, of course, this is not one of my favorite palettes because when I looked at Pat McGrath, I'm looking for like just the whole difference of the color scheme because that's what I've kind of just gathered and fell in love with. But honestly, I'm going to use this palette a lot because it's neutral. <laughs> and even though I use like basically all my palettes on a daily basis, as far as like even just Mothership 5 or Mothership 2, La Vie and Rose, those are some of my favorite Pat Machette graph palettes of course decadence like I'm going to reach for this also you know what I mean and I use a lot of different colors on a daily basis and I'm not afraid to play with color but sometimes you just need a palette where you know you can get a great look very quickly and you're going to have excellent formula and you could just get out the door or go into your bit because sometimes you know you just can't wear like bright blitz blue eyeshadow to wherever you're going it's not always appropriate if it, it just I mean, if you do this fine, but you know, sometimes people might be like, where are you going with this bright blue eyeshadow on? So, <laughs> like I can see myself wearing this to work all the time. A lot of people can probably wear it to work and that's why they want to buy it. Because if they spend $125, they're going to want something that they can use all the time and justify the price. And then like that brings me to the next point. Like this particular palette right here, I pulled out this little baby right here. This is Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition. The proof is in the pudding right here, okay? This palette stays sold out all the time, okay? All the time you go on the website, it's sold out. I'm not even sure if it's available right now. I have not checked, but I know this palette was sold out for a couple months. This, these little palettes are now basically exclusively on the Pat McGrath website and not on the Sephora website anymore. And literally, the palette came back in the stock, and I was just like, you know, I ended up buying one for my friend because she had been wanting this palette for months. And she was like... <laughs> When is it going to come in the stock? Because for her, this is a palette that she can use all the time. That makes sense. You know, bronzes and golds and mauves, and those shades make sense to a lot of people where even though she dabbles in color, she's still like, I need this palette. And it totally makes sense for Pat McGrath to add it to her line. And that way you get a wide variety of customer base. And then, you know, maybe they'll just kind of step out of their comfort zone and say, okay, I'm ready to try another palette. So I think that's great because you have a neutral palette, but you're getting all of her formulas. You're getting the special shades. You're getting those mattes that are amazing you're getting these nice satin shades that are amazing also that you can throw in your crease and you have a lot of different variability of things that you can put in your crease then you're getting like the 003 shade and you're getting that high shine foiledness you're getting the beautiful dual chrome that is not so scary and then you're getting this nice little pinky shifty shade and i popped it over here and it, it kind of shifted into another shade and then you got a little glitter because people still like a little glitz even though they like neutrals you I mean it doesn't mean that they're boring they just like what they like and you know they get a little glitter also so i think with this it was just like kind of an excellent choice to have the whole palette be in a tin pan format something that everybody can enjoy all the beautiful formulas that Pat McGrath comes with. So I was thinking about it when the palette released and I was just like, okay, I don't know if I expected something different with the four special shades because you know, usually these are the shades where you're gonna get so many dual chrome shifting shades. You're like, you don't know what color it is. You put it on top of another shade and morphs into this color. But I was thinking like rose, okay, maybe you would have more pinky shades, but I'm actually glad she did it because we have some repeating shades, but I'm glad she didn't go the more pinky route. So if you think about it, Pat McGrath has a lot of pinky special shades. You know, we have, 
you know, we have this quad right here, all pinks. This is basically, you know, this is the rose special shade edition. It is it's ritualistic rose. So even so, like brings me to another point. This two is an excellent pair together. If you look in Mothership 2, you have a rose gold 002, I would say. And then in Mothership 5, you have a, um, a rose, you have a pink color there. <laughs> so across the board, there are a lot of pink special shades. So I don't know what she could have done that would have made it pink and we're just like, Yes, this is different than all we got here. So I think she did a wise choice by keeping it where it is. Like I said, the palette is gorgeous. You're definitely going to get some gorgeous looks. And I mean, it's going to be top quality. And sometimes the formula just matters when you're talking about eyeshadows. Like, you know, it's a difference when it comes to formula. Like what I was saying about Natasha Denona. Like, yes, we have neutral palettes. But if you get it in that formula that you love, that's your top formula, you're going to love that palette so much more. You know, it just makes all the difference between using this particular neutral palette and going for this particular neutral palette. So overall, I think that she did a great job with this palette, but she really needs to just make it permanent because like I said, you know, this little baby right here stays, it stays out there. You know, it stays sold out. So the proof is in the putting people like neutrals. And I think that she should make this palette permanent. It should not be limited edition. I do understand that sometimes brands want to have something that's special, limited edition. You know, I get it. But I don't think that this is the palette for limited edition. I get decadence over this one because this one is so neutral that people are going to want to use it all the time. Or if they couldn't get it now, they're going to want to think about it. They're going to see the reviews. They're going to see it in store. And they're going to want to, you know, have it. But now that it's just so limited to quantities, it's just like, okay, well, this is the palette of my dreams that I really wanted to try by Pat McGrath, but now I can't get my hands on it. And it just kind of caused a little firestorm. So I hope that she just kind of makes this palette, you know, not limited edition. You know, it's kind of like one of those color rain queen of heart situations, you know, where the palette is just so good, so loved. They were like, all right, all right. We have restocked it about three, four, five times. You know what? It's permanent. And nobody complained about that particular limited edition going permanent. And I think nobody's complaining if Decadence actually became permanent or came back. So with that being said, I think it's a gorgeous palette. Let me know that you get your hands on it. I'm so sorry it's currently out of stock. It does look like she's going to restock it, but you know, I don't know anything, honey. So <laughs> just let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Did you guys like the looks? I think the looks came out great. Let me know if you want me to use the palette some more because you know I will. And um, I'm actually going to plan on, I'm going to do a look with both of these together. I think that would be, I think that will be dope, okay? So let me know down in the comments. You know I love to talk about makeup with you all. So let me know what you guys are thinking. Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel because you know I would love to have you here in my makeup family. And we do like the greatest chair dance of all time. So come on, you know it's time for the chair dance. Chair dance. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.